الأجدر بها آيا لما أجبه إلونا أدال أفتا غير أبي السبطين علي وهيال كان سواه يذكر في May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu wa salam and will bless our hearts with certainty in relation to their attributes and their excellent names and their excellent character and the divinely positions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them. And may Allah give us the ability, the adequacy, tilatu wa salam in words, in character, and in heart and soul. And may Allah bring that day soon when the King of the world, Salamullah alayhi, comes and he fills the earth with justice and peace and equity and brotherly love. And, and he heals all those who are sick and he makes opulent all those who are impoverished and he remove, removes all pains, all sufferings, all afflictions. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف. Our discussion was with regard to the hadith of the Nabi صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من ما تبغير إمام ما تميتة جاهلية whosoever dies without an imam he dies a pagan death. And the most common position that you see in the other denomination that they would say that this applies to the caliphs, to the kings, and to the rulers. That's obviously after trying to conceal the hadith and hide the hadith and try uh, not to mention the hadith and try to evade any question that arises from the hadith. However, if they don't have any escape if they do not find any refuge and they have to answer, that would be their most common answer. However, this answer does not satisfy any mind that has some intellectual capacity and some curiosity with regard to the history of Islam and with regard to the teachings of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We mentioned that the other denomination, they consider Abu Bakr to be the top caliph, to the, be the best caliph, to be the best individual after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this ummah. And we have proven beyond any doubt, if anyone watches our lecture, previous lecture in this regard, and many other lectures that I have delivered on this subject, if he watches and pays attention to the details and the proofs and the evidence, they would understand that this hadith cannot apply to Abu Bakr. I mentioned in the previous lecture that the Siddiqa Tahira Salamullahi Alayha, the daughter of the seal of the messengers, Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Alayhi had a position that is of interest and thus must be studied and which makes very clear what is the position of the household of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam vis-a-vis the caliphate of Abu Bakr? Her position of anger or of wrath and of turning away with, with disgust from Abu Bakr is a proclamation, is a statement which clearly states that Abu Bakr in the eyes of Ahl al-Bayt is a liar, is a cheat, is a usurper, and a person who is a traitor to Rasulullah and to the Muslims, and a person who is condemned to the fire of hell. And this, please refer to my previous speech, and everything has been explained therein. Inshallah in this lecture, I will continue some of the discussions, some of the points that have been left unsaid that should be mentioned here at this juncture.
with regard to the previous lecture. And I've, as I've mentioned before, what happened between Ahlul Bayt alayhim was salatu was salam, specifically as Siddiqa al Tahir, salam Allahi alayha, and the uh, caliphate right after the demise of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam requires more detail and inshallah if Allah gives me tawfiq, he gives me success in the ability after the month of Ramadan and the days of the remembrance of the martyrdom of Sayyidatun Isa al-Alameen of the Queen of the Ladies of Paradise inshallah at that time if Allah gives me the ability and the adequacy I'll present to you much more detail with the help of Allah so the hadith that I showed to you, which we read, was in Bukhari, hadith number 3092. This is Bukhari, volume 4, Tabu Darus Salam, page number 201. Hadith 3092 and 3093. We analyzed this narration. This narration, which is a false hadith, a lie, attributed by Abu Bakr to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bukhari mentions this incident in this narrative of Abu Bakr from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on two more occasions in his book. Let's have a look at them. Bukhari, volume number five, published by Darus Salam, 2007, page number 332, uh, uh, narration number 4240 and 4241. Very similar to the text and to the words that in the previous narration, also on the authority of no, no, no one else but Aisha. Narrated Aisha that a Siddiq al Tahira, the daughter of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let me zoom in, okay, sent someone to Abu Bakr when he was a caliph asking for her inheritance from the Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Which the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam had left of the property bestowed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Fay gained without fighting in Medina and Fadak and what remained of homes of the Khaybers, the Khaybar Buri. Because a certain portion of Homs is the personal property of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَرَسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. So, the, a certain portion of the Homs pertains and belongs is, and is the property of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, also, the part that belongs to Allah goes to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On that, Abu Bakr said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, our property is not inherited. Whatever we leave is sadaqah. But the family of the Nabi Muhammad of Nabi وسلم, can eat of this property. <laughs> what a joke. Sadaqah is haram on them, and he says they can eat another lie by Abu Bakr. By Allah, I will not make any changes in that the state of sadaqah of Allah's Messenger. It is his personal property. Who said, why he didn't inform his daughter? Why he didn't inform anybody else? That this should be sadaqah. I will not change the sadaqah. Okay. Of Allah's Messenger, we'll leave it as it was during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and dispose of it as Allah's Messenger used to do it. Uh, obviously, uh, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his personal income, his personal properties, his orchards, and his lands, all of the income was distributed in his lifetime amongst the poor, but it was not, the property itself was not sadaqah. The property was his own, nonetheless, out of his charity, out of his uh, kindness and compassion, he would donate the income. But it didn't mean that it was charity. Now he says, I'll, it's in my hands, I'll do whatever he was doing, I'll do the same thing. So Abu Bakr refused anything to a Siddiq al Tahir, salamullahi alayha. She remained alone. And then, uh, 
She remained alive for six months after the death of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When she died, her husband, Amir al-Mu'in Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, buried her. And before I missed two lines, Abu Bakr refused to give anything of that to Az-Zahra Salamu Alaihi So she became angry with Abu Bakr and kept away from him and did not talk to him till she died. She, remi she remained alive for six months after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When she died, her husband, Amir al-Mu'min Alayhi Salam, buried her at night, at night without informing Abu Bakr, and he offered the fun funeral prayer by himself. So, and then Aisha goes on about uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam. So you saw it here again that Aisha st states again, what happened was that uh, as Siddiq al-Tahira demanded the uh, inheritance of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam, and Abu Bakr came up with this narration that it's sadaqah, and we mentioned in the previous lecture what is wrong with that statement some of the aspects that what's wrong with that statement we have more evidence more proofs that this statement by abu Bakr was a lie attributed to the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam nonetheless this is not the time to go into that detail and because that requires a lot of time and then bukhari mentions this on one occasion more occasion and that's volume number eight this is published by darus salam year 2007 and this is Page number 381, uh, hadith number 6725, narrated Aisha, Siddiqa Tahira alayha, and Abbas, the uncle of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi went to Abu Bakr seeking their share from the property of Allah's messenger. And at that time, they were asking for their land at Fadak and their share from Khaybar. And Abu Bakr said to them, I have heard from Messenger of Allah saying, our property is not to be inherited and whatever we, have, uh, we after our death, leave to be spent in charity. But the family can eat from this charity. And that is another lie. Inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, this is another reason why Abu Bakr was a liar. And that is, he said, there, this is charity, but Ahlul Bayt can eat from charity. And this is a matter of consensus in Sahih Hadith that Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu wasalam cannot consume from charity. And that will come inshallah and I'll explain that for you inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala. Now you saw this in Bukhari. The same matter has been also been narrated by Muslim. And uh, I mentioned to you before that the Omri scholars have mentioned that the best Ahadith, the most credible of all Ahadith or Ahadith that have been narrated both by Bukhari and Muslim. So this is one of the most credible form of a hadith that have been narrated by both Bukhari and Muslim. Let's have a look at Muslim. This is Muslim by Muslim al Hajjaj, volume number five, published by Darus Salam, page number 46, hadith number 4580. Um, let's go over here. Um, I will not change any, uh, let's go here. It was narrated from Aisha that a Siddiq al-Tahira sallallahu sent word to Abu Bakr asking for inheritance from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the booty that Allah had granted him in al Madinah and Fadak and was left, what was left of the booty of Khaybar. Abu Bakr said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, we prophets have no heirs and whatever we leave behind as charity. Rather, the family of mine may live on the income of these properties. By Allah, I will not change this. So he he refused to give anything to a Siddiq al-Tahir. And what was her reaction? Did she become happy? Did she appreciate what Abu Bakr has said? Did she submit to this purported uh, direct, directive from her father? No, she did not agree. So what happened? Abu Bakr refused to give her anything. And as Siddiq al-Tahir felt angry about Abu Bakr for that. And she forsook him and did not speak to him until she died. And she lived for uh, six months after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu So this again mentions the anger, the wrath, and the fact of hijran, which we mentioned to you, as to abandon somebody, somebody with disgust. To abandon somebody with disgust and to abandon somebody with um, 
with uh, with uh, with uh, with hate, with anger, and not uh, talk to, to them. So this was the position of a Siddiq al Tahir This position, this attitude, uh, uh, implies and denotes. I've talked about that in the previous lecture. I'm not going to repeat that. So Abu Bakr said that this is charity. Now, if it were indeed charity, then it was very important for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to inform us, inform us Siddiqa Tahira that all of his properties, as soon as he dies, they become charity. Why it's necessary? Just because a caring father would always want to save her daughter from embarrassment. And this is a question of will, a question of inheritance. And she is the sole inheritor, therefore she deserves to know. And her father, because, because the rules of inheritance are universal. For all Muslims, they are the same. But in her case, according to Abu Bakr, it's different. She is the only ex exception in the entire universe in Islam. Before Islam, other prophets, they would claim also the prophets did not leave any inheritance behind. But in Islam, she is the only exception, the sole exception to the rules and to the laws of inheritance. So she deserves to know that for many reasons. So, so she doesn't become angry at this uh, Khalifa, at this fr uh, supposed friend of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And for the very fact that Sadaqa is haram for her. And any father would want to save his uh, favorite daughter, his beloved daughter from eating haram, from eating forbidden things. Why sadaqa? Is sadaqa haram for Ahlul Bayt alayhim as wassalam? Indeed so. This is Sahih Muslim, volume number three by Muslim Ibn Hajjaj al Qushayri al Nisaburi, published by Dar al Salam in 2007. Here, page number 131, not appointing the family of the Prophet وسلم, in charge of charity. So, people from the clan of the Nabi وسلم, from Bani Hashim, they went to Rasulullah to give them. Uh, jobs to appoint them as collectors of charity of zakah charity rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam refused that so this long narration is with regard to that that rabia ibn al-harith and abath ibn abdul muttalib they got together and they said that fadl fadl who was the son of abbas abbas uh, abbas is the uncle of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rabia which who is also a cousin of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam these two cousins should be appointed by the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to collect charities. And a person who collects charities, then he gets a share. He gets a share of that charity, of that sadaqah, for himself. So it would be an income for them, it would be a job for them. And they had been turned away from Mecca, these people, and they were in al Madina al munawwara So they said that to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can read it here, it's page 131. What did the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? The charity is not appropriate for the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inna sadiq sadaqata la tanbaghi. Charity is not permissible, not appropriate, not permissible for the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, it is the dirt of the people. It is the uncleanliness, the filth of people, charity. Do not take it. And then there's another narration. And the coming page, 133, uh, narration number 2482, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, this charity is the dirt of the people. Look, let me zoom in. This charity is the dirt of the people and it is not permissible for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa nor for the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa La tahillu. It's not permissible. It's not permissible. End of story. Not permissible. It's not permissible. It's not permissible. And if it's not permissible, <laughs> if it's not permissible, how could be Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? These hadith are valid by consensus. How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not inform his daughter of something so important? Because as long as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive, all of his, uh, of his property is permissible for his daughter to consume with his permission, obviously. But as soon as he dies, this becomes sadaqah. The moment he dies, this becomes sadaqah. And if Zahra Salamullah wants to 
consume it, drink it, or eat it, or use it, it would become a sin, a major sin. There, and it's not her property anymore, it's the property of sadaqah, sadaqah for the poor people, for the impoverished, and for the other deserving people. And she may not consume any of that. Why he did not inform her? And why Abu Bakr saying Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is sadaqah and the family can eat it. And that is a, a quite a, a very vivid con a contradiction in the uh, teachings of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that could not be the case. Then as Siddiqa Tahira Salamullahi alayha, until her demise, until her martyrdom, she did not talk to Abu Bakr again. Anger, as soon as Abu Bakr says those words, she became angry, and I mentioned to you, and I explained that her anger betokens Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's anger, and it signifies and it shows Allah's wrath and Allah's anger. So that by itself is a proof and an evidence that Abu Bakr was lying. And this fact that as siddiq al-Tahira never talked again to Abu Bakr is another reason that as siddiq al-Tahira considered Abu Bakr not even a Muslim. And the reason for that is, this is the book of Bukhari, volume number 8, translated by Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan, published in Riyadh, uh, the Arabian Peninsula, page, uh, by, in year 1997, here. Kitab al-Adab, the Book of Manners, uh, page number 63. Babu al-Hijrah. This is the chapter of this, to desert someone. Cut one's relation with another Muslim. Not to speak to him or not to meet him. Not to speak, not want to have anything to do with someone. That is to detest someone, to loathe someone, and so much not to even see, want to see someone's face and let alone to, uh, to talk to that person. Is this permissible? قول النبي صلى الله عليه وآله He said, the Nabi صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم said, لا يحل لرجل أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم said, it is not lawful, it's a sin for a man to desert, not to speak to, to forsake, to turn away with disgust, not to speak to his brother for more than three days. There's no unmeeting, unmeeting them, unmeeting him. It's not unmeeting him is just uh, redundant. It's not even part. It's just an, they have added um, um, per their own opinion. It's not part of the translation. So it's not permissible for a Muslim when he meets another, uh, for another Muslim to turn away, to be in a position of anger and turning away from another Muslim for more than three days, for more than three days. And as Siddiq al-Tahira never spoke with Abu Bakr again. And obviously she one. And I mentioned and I explained to you, she is the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed us that to follow Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam because they never separate from Quran. Uh, Lack of separation from Quran means that all their actions are in accord and resonance with the Noble Quran. So that uh, means that uh, sh her forsaking Abu Bakr and turning away from Abu Bakr is a Quranic position. And that only uh, strengthens the position that Abu Bakr's character is such that he is not a Muslim in the eyes of the Ahlul Bayt والسلام, or the Noble Quran. And then there, this is part of a long tr tradition, long story, what happened between uh, Urwa ibn Zubair. Is it Urwa or is it Abdullah? Abdullah ibn Zubair and Aisha. So it's a long story. Uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair, what happened? Abdullah is the nephew of Aisha and Aisha was mad at him. And for some reason, Aisha did not want to speak to him. So Abdullah ibn Zubair came to Aisha and reminded Aisha of this hadith, that it's not permissible for a Muslim to be angry and not want to talk to another Muslim for more than three days. And when Aisha heard this, she reconciled with Abdullah ibn Zubair. And 
what you saw there was this long hadith. Uh, so, uh, uh, if a Siddiq at Tahir does not want to talk to Abu Bakr, it's a question to ponder what is the reason for that. Here is the, again another hadith, hadith number 6077. It's not lawful for a man to desert his brother for more than three nights, at any rate. Has Siddiq al-Tahir ever become um, uh, happy with Abu Bakr again? No. Aisha is clear in stating that that was not the case, number one. Number two, there, there is uh, another hadith that I want to show to you that uh, how Abu Bakr contradicted himself, how he uh, confessed that in God was salam, do inherit from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a Sahih hadith, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal has narrated this in his Musnad. Let's have a look. Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal, published by Darus Salam. This is Musnad of Ahmad, volume number one, as you may see here, and published by Darus Salam. Here at page number 31, Hadith number 14 from Abu Bakr. It was narrated on the authority of Abu Tufail. Abu Tufail was one of the companions of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who lived a very long life. And he is the last Sahabi, last companion who passed away around uh, uh, the year 114. So he was alive more for over 100 years after the demise the martyrdom of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He died a very, and when he met the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was very young. And when he died, he was very old. And he was Shia. And there are many, many ahadith from him in the books of the other congregation, which is strengthened and which gives support to the Shia position. This um, uh, narrative by Abu, Abu Tufail, it was narrated that Abu Tufail said, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, Siddiq al-Tahira Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent word to Abu Bakr saying, are you the heir of the Messenger of Allah? Are you the heir of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or are his family? He said, no, rather his family. Rather his family are his heirs. You see that? Anta. Anta waritha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa am ahlo. Here we go. Are you the inheritor? Have you inherited from? A good translation would be, are you, have you inherited from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or his family? Do you inherit from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or his family? And the question, the answer is obvious. She is asking not because she doesn't know. She's asking this question, so Abu Bakr may give a reply, and that reply and that answer would prove her point. Do you inherit from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or his family? And Abu Bakr was quick to say, "No, his family." قال لا بل أهله قال فأين سهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم? So where is the uh, uh, the portion of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Khums, when Khums comes, are six portions. One portion is for Allah, one portion is for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one portion is for his family, one portion uh, is for those who do the Jihad, participate in the Jihad, and one portion is for those who are travelers and they do not have um, enough uh, sufficient income. She said, where is the share of Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Homs? Homs or the booties? So many things were captured as booty. So many things were uh, the property of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not by the way of Homs, but by the way of Fay, because it was pure Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's property without anybody's share. So where are they? Abu Bakr said, I heard. Abu Bakr said, what? I heard the Messenger. He came up with a different answer. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, if Allah grants some wealth 
to a prophet, then that prophet dies, then he takes his soul, he grants it to the one who took charge after him. <laughs> I heard him say that. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so he contradicts himself before he said Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it's all sadaqah now he's saying what it all goes to the next ruler and I'm the ruler <laughs> so I have decided look so I have decided to give the benefit of it the benefit of it not the, the property itself to the Muslims to the charity I'm going to spend it I'm going to spend it to my friends, to whatever I want to spend it on. She said, that is fine. She didn't say that's fine. No, no, no. That's a very bad translation. And I'll prove that to you. That's a bad translation. She didn't say that's fine. She said, look at the Arabic here. The Arabic. There is no, that is fine. That is fine. There is no such assertion. This portion, that is fine. They, it's been, it's, it's a mistranslation and it's a, and it's a, a, a betrayal of trust of a translator. Uh, let me see, go here. That is fine. This is not, um, there is no such فَأَنْتَ وَمَا سَمِعْتَ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The translation, the correct translation starts from here. The first part is just an addition. That's not true. You know best what you heard from the Messenger of Allah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ That is correct translation. You heard, you know best what you heard. And this assertion that you know best what you heard could be interpreted in two ways. When, when you are authenticating when you're certifying that a person is being truthful you could say the same thing you know what you heard from him. and also when you are being skeptical when you know that the other's party is not being truthful and you say the person for instance says that the boss told me that this is my property and you say to him okay what you, if you heard that from him you know what you heard from him so this is also true when you're skeptical or you're being um, uh, you're questioning the veracity, the truthfulness of the party that's reporting that question. So which is that? Which is that? Did she become become uh, uh, pleased? So that that part of translation that which you saw here that is fine. The statement that's fine. That's not true. That's not part of the statement. This much is part of the statement. Anta a'lam wa ma sami'ta. Anta wa ma sami'ta min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a'lam. You know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It does not necessarily mean. It could mean. In some context, it could mean that the person is being truthful and what he heard is true. And also could mean uh, that uh, As-Siddiq al-Tahira sallallahu alayhi is saying that uh, Abu Bakr is lying. Abu Bakr is lying and is being dishonest and he's making up a hadith. He's ascribing false statements to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which one is true though? Let's go to Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, uh, a man who has reached the full heights of scholarship in hadith, in the arts of hadith, in the Omri order, the author of uh, Fathul Bari and many other books which are very famous and well known. Oh, first let's uh, first let's um, let me mention to you that this hadith is Sahih. Over here they said it's not who Hassan. Look, it's not as Hassan. It's not as Hassan. Hassan means a, a hadith that is Hujja. I mentioned to you before, and it's not only Hassan. This hadith is Sahih. Let's have a look at the hadith. Uh, Mustad of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, published by Ahmad Shakir, published by Darul Hadith in Qahira, and its hadith have been verified and researched by Ahmad Muhammad Shakir. And this Shaykh Ahmad Shakir, Ahmad Shakir, uh, 
is a very learned, was a very learned, he died in the 1950s, he's from Egypt, a very learned scholar who passed away in the recent decades, and he is a very knowledgeable and very erudite person in the arts of hadith, and the Salafi order respects him greatly, they respect him profoundly. Ahmad Muhammad Shakir published, this is published by Darul Hadith, volume number one, uh, page number 177, hadith number 14. Hadith number 14 is Nadu Sahih. This hadith is Sahih. Here is the hadith. Antawaritha, antawaritha, anta, anta, not, not anta, antawaritha, anta means anta, anta, hal anta. It means have you, it's a question. Anta, because the Hamza of uh, Istifha, the Hamza of uh, question, that become, there's an idram between that and the Hamza of Anta. Anta, what is the, how, do you inherit from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his family? And Abu Bakr said his family. So where is the, so where is the property of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Then Abu Bakr said, I heard, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said such and such things. So, the hadith is sahih, as you saw that. Now, what does Hafiz ibn Hajar say? Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in Fath al-Bari, published by Darul Fikr, volume number six. Uh, this was published by Darul Fikr at the year 2007, page number 245. فَغَضِبَتْ أَسْسَدِّيقَةَ الطَّاهِرَةَ سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلِهَا فَهَجَرَتْ أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَلَمْ تَزَلْ مُهَاجِرَتَّهُ غَضِبَتْ تَدُلُّ عَلَى أَنَّهَا إِمْتَنَعَتْ مِنَ الْكَلَامِ جُمْلَةَ وَهَذَا صَرِيحُ الْهَاجِرِ She became angry. She became, Abu Bakr said, نحن, uh, لا نورث ما تركنا صدقة نحن معاشر الأنبياء لا نورث ما تركنا صدقة Abu Bakr said, I heard Rasul Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, that we are not inherited from, and everything is left for charity. Everything is charity. As soon as Yusei said, as soon as Abu Bakr said this, she became angry. Hafiz ibn Hajar says, Tadullu. This signifies annaha imtana'at min al kalami jumlah. That she didn't respond to Abu Bakr. She didn't say anything to Abu Bakr. She became angry. Didn't say anything to Abu Bakr. Wa sarihun fil hajar. وَهَذَا صَرِيحُ الْحَاجِرُ And this, this is a very, um, this clearly, without any ambiguity, proves that she had hajr from Abu Bakr. Hajr is that word in, in Arabic that does not have a good English translation that you can translate in one word, as I mentioned to you. Hajr means that when you detest someone, when you abhor someone so much that you do not want to see his face anymore, you do not want to talk to him anymore, you do not want to have anything, you do not want to be with that person in the same room, you do not want to meet them, you do not want to talk to them. So that means Hajar. So she forsook Abu Bakr, she deserted Abu Bakr, she turned away from Abu Bakr with disgust, with anger. And, and then, وَمَا أَخْرَجَهُ أَحْمَدْ here, look, here. وَمَا أَخْرَجَهُ أَحْمَدْ وَأَمَّا مَا أَخْرَجَهُ أَحْمَدْ The narration of Ahmad ibn Hanbal وَأَبُوا الطَّفَيْلِ وَأَبُوا دَعُودْ مِنْ طَرِيقَ أَبُوا الطَّفَيْلِ And their narration on the authority of Abu Tufail, which I just narrated to you from, uh, from uh, the book of Ahmad, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. قَالَ أَنْتَ وَارِثَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ عَنْ أَهْلَ الصِّدِّقَ الطَّاهِرَ سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا said to Abu Bakr, do you inherit from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or his household? He said, no, his household. So where is the share? And that, then that reply. قَالَتْ فَأَنْتَ وَمَا سَمِعْتَ Siddiqa Tahira sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know what you heard. You know, you know what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or you know, you know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This statement, does it indicate that she was fine with Abu Bakr? That all of a sudden that she became happy? No, no. Why? Because Aisha says until she died, she did not talk to Abu Bakr and she was angry at Abu Bakr. But look, have a look at what Hafiz ibn Hajar says. It says, فَلَا يُعَارِذُ This statement, 
فلا يعارض ما في الصحيح من صحيح سريح الهجران. This statement that you know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is not inconsistent. This is not incompatible. What? With the hadith of Bukhari. What is the hadith of Bukhari? Sarih al-Hijran, which is clearly without any ambiguity indicates that as siddiq al tahira salamu uh, forsook Abu Bakr with disgust and she turned away from Abu Bakr and did not want to see Abu Bakr's face again. So there's no inconsistency between do these two statements. See, between these two. What's the hadith of Bukhari? The hadith of Bukhari says, as siddiq al tahira salamu Allahi alayha, hated Abu Bakr, and he and she with hate and disgust and anger did not want to talk with Abu Bakr again. What you heard from my father. You know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there's no inconsistency between these two, it's obvious when she says to Abu Bakr, you know better what you heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It means that you're lying. This thing that you're making up, that all I'm, that, that I'm leaving behind, it's, it goes to the person who is after me, to the ruler, next ruler, and he can do what alayhi wa salatu wa can eat sadaqah. فَأَنْتَ أَعْلَمُ فَأَنْتَ وَمَا سَمِعْتَ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَنْتَ بِمَا سَمِعْتَ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَعْلَمْ You know what you you know better what you heard from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. It it has one um, meaning which is literal meaning. The literal meaning. The literal meaning is you know what you heard from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. There is one meaning that it's it connotes. There is one meaning. That's the connotative meaning of this assertion. And that means that what you heard from Rasulullah is something else. And you are lying and you are a disingenuous person and you are making uh, a false claim. You didn't hear this from Rasulullah and you are making this up. This, the narration of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, that she said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Alaihi Wasallam, said to Abu Bakr, what? You know better what you heard from my father. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Alaihi This is not inconsistent with the, with, the, with the narration of Bukhari, which clearly, without any ambiguity, proves that as siddiq al-Tahira, Sallallahu Alaihi was mad, was angry at Abu Bakr, and turned away with disgust from Abu Bakr for the rest of her life. وَلَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى الرِّضَابِ ذَلِكْ أُنْذُرُ and ولا يدل على الرضا بذلك. And this does does not indicate that the Siddiq al-Tahira سلام الله عليها became pleased with Abu Bakr. No, it, this that's not its meaning. بل ثم مع ذلك ففيه لفظة منكرة. And then there is a statement unbelievable, منكرة لفظة منكرة. A statement, a phrase that is very very unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Munkar, Munkar, Al Hadith Al Munkar. What is the meaning of Al Hadith Al Munkar? There is one um, literal meaning of the, the word Munkar, and there is one meaning that uh, in the parlance of the scholars of Hadith. Al Hadith Al Munkar is a Hadith that's Shad, the Hadith that is different and, and it's odd and sits aside from other Hadith. And it's not consistent with other hadith. That's a, a hadith al-munkar. And it doesn't mean it's not sahih. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Al-hadith could be sahih. It could be munkar. Because it's not consistent with a hadith. And inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, if time comes, I'll talk to you about the different uh, terms in the uh, sciences of hadith. All these terms are made up. All these terms are just <laughs> fake terms. They don't have any credibility, but but we have to study them and explain them because they have used them. When the literal meaning of munkar is something unbelievable, something that does not sit right, and that's what. Wahia qawlu Abu Bakr, and that is the statement of Abu Bakr, the unbelievable state, uh, uh, phrase. In the hadith of Ahmad, there is an unbelievable, a 
very deniable assertion, deniable assertion, munkara, deniable assertion. And what is that? That is the statement of Abu Bakr. What is the statement of Abu Bakr? Bal ahlu. Because Abu Bakr said, Bal ahlu. As Siddiq al Tahira asked, Do you inherit from Rasulullah or his family? Abu Bakr said, No, his family. This assertion of Abu Bakr, this reply of Abu Bakr to As Siddiq al Tahira, and this Sahih hadith is unbelievable, is deniable. Why say Hafiz ibn Hajar says that? Because this falsifies the hadith of Abu Bakr himself. Because it belies the hadith that Abu Bakr attributed and ascribed to Rasulullah Nobody inherits from us. And whatever we leave behind, all of it is charity. Now he's saying this family is inherits from Rasulullah Verily, this statement, verily, this statement, Mu'arithun is inconsistent, is contradictory. Lil hadith is sahih to that hadith which is sahih which has been narrated from by Bukhari. In the Nabiya la yuwarith that the Nabi or in the Nabiya la yurath that the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not inherited from. So Abu Bakr on this occasion he he belied himself. He contradicted contradicted himself, and again once more he attributed a lie to the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying that whatever he leaves behind goes to the next ruler, although his family do inherit from him. So, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, these, we, uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us the capacity, the ability to offer you these, this research and this discussion in a very brief manner. The question of Fadak, the question of um, the confiscation and the usurpation of the inheritance of a Siddiq al Tahir, there is more detail, there is much detail in these discussions, and there are many more proofs that why Abu Bakr was a liar, why Abu Bakr was a cheat, why Abu Bakr was a dishonest usurper. And inshallah, wa ta'ala, these, if Allah gives me the capacity, I will try, inshallah, wa ta'ala, and the uh, months after Muharram, uh, of before Muharram, after Ramadan, in the days of the martyrdom of uh, Siddiq al-Tahir, uh, I will explain some of the rules. May Allah be us all. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum al-sharif. Oh Allah, give us the capacity, give us the energy, give us the ability to love Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as salatu wa salam and to serve them and to be their good Shia. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj. May peace be with you. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. قاسم الكفرة ومرغم الفجرة الذي جعلته من نبيك بمنزلة هارون من موسى اللهم والي من والا وعادي من عادا وانصر من نصرا واخذل من خضلا والعن من نصب له من الأولين والآخرين وصل علي أفضل ما صليت على أحد من أنصياء أنبيائك يا رب العالمين علي علي ما